the night went off without a hitch, the whole of the town showed up. Charlie and Luke had picked a long, flowing, if not slightly revealing, black gown for me to wear. I sat on a red velvet chase on the porch, welcoming the guests. The townspeople gaped at the houses filled with horrors and screams. They took pictures of my dozens of jack-o'-lanterns. Right as they were lulled into a false sense of security, the league of terrifying demons chased them down the road to me. Welcome to my house of horrors. I gestured to the door. You may enter in groups of five, if, that is, you wish to leave alive. Everyone would cling to each other, giggling nervously. You could see them silently counting out their groups, looking to see who would be left out. One of Luke's men was stationed across from me, dressed in a butler's uniform, but with the massive head of a raven. He would push the door open and let five unlucky souls in. The door would slam shut behind them with the help of the fishing line he had tied to the handle. When they entered, they would find a roaring fire and a single red velvet wing-back chair beside it. Except I had no fireplace. Once they entered, they were in Charlie's web. They would hear their names whispered by the voices of loved ones long dead. The fire would go out, leaving only a single candle burning on the imaginary mantelpiece. As their eyes would adjust to the waning light, their heartbeats would rise. They'd hear a childlike giggle, then hot, moist breath on the backs of their necks. Charlie would take them then. He would show them a planned-out horror. We had to be careful that everyone would see the same thing. After he would release them, they'd see light through the French doors, leading them to Luke. As soon as their fingers touched the doorknob, Charlie would softly call out, In the garden, you will find a monster that is as old as time. She loves to riddle, but it is no jest. Beware, for the wrong answer will lead to death. Just outside the door, a ram-headed demon in a suit was waiting to give them the jump scare of their lives. Afterward, they'd meet the Sphinx. So many screams rang out that night. The street echoed with them. They were all followed by laughter as the groups came out of the garden and found a large bonfire with hot dogs, hamburgers, and a bar tended by Medusa herself. Well... There was a massive resemblance, but you could actually look at this one 